Since the tragic Lion Air and Ethiopian Airlines Boeing 737 MAX 8 accidents in October 2018 and March 2019, which led to the subsequent grounding of all 385 aircraft that had been delivered by 13th of March, we have been asked many questions by our clients and the wider market about the impact on and outlook for the MAX program. In this update, we will explain our latest view on the aircraft program and why we believe it is fully in the industry's mutual best interests for aircraft to be returned to service safely and as quickly as possible. As I have already mentioned, at the time of the grounding, there were 385 aircraft delivered to 55 operators globally. Actually, it was 383 aircraft in airline service, with another couple of aircraft delivered to customers for outfitting as business jet versions. 30 of those airlines were actually operating five or more aircraft, and of course many of those have experienced significant fleet and schedule disruption as a consequence. So what have the 53 airlines done to mitigate that operational disruption? Taking a look at Syrian Fleet's analyzer is somewhat illuminating. 40 of those airlines have added 278 passenger jets to their fleet since the grounding. That means of course that there are 13 airlines, 25% of the total operators, that have actually not made any additions to their fleet to cover max disruption. There are some significant operators in that group. Aerolineus Argentinus, Copper Airlines, Fly Dubai, Silk Air, Southwest Airlines, these are five examples. These airlines are largely using their existing aircraft more intensively or dropping routes or frequencies from their networks to mitigate the loss of MAX for now. There isn't time in this update to explain the network implications, but Sirium Schedules shows all of these changes. The next interesting point is that 207 of these aircraft are used aircraft, and unsurprisingly the majority, 169, that's 82%, are single aisles, with an average age of 13.5 years. In actual fact, 62 of these single aisles are 15 years old or greater today. Many of these are wet leased, but many are also aircraft that have seen short term or longer new leases, when they may otherwise have been headed for part out. This data also doesn't take into account any lease extensions, which may not be immediately evident in Fleet's analyzer. Clearly, the grounding has for now created some short-term positive halo for mid-life aircraft leasing. And once we have resolution, there may well be quite a number of aircraft in the market which airlines will suddenly no longer require. Look out for more retirements and part-outs, and perhaps negative pressure on values and lease rates once things return to normal with the MAX. So when might that return to normal be? Boeing noted in their second quarter results announcement at the end of last month, that it is working under the assumption that regulators will begin lifting the grounding in the fourth quarter of 2019. Unsurprisingly, the OEM is not willing to be more precise in public, since it is not fully in control of the timeline. However, it is likely that there is significant briefing going on behind the curtains, with both airlines and lessors. And it is the former who must be most public, since it is the airlines who will be marketing seats on MAX aircraft to the flying public in their schedules. Thus, we can look to them for potential guidance. The Sirium dashboard carries a significant amount of helpful content. Southwest Airlines noted in recent guidance that assuming regulators approve the 737 MAX to fly in November, the airline aims to have at least 30 of the aircraft operating by 6th of January. They currently have 34 MAX 8s stored at Victorville and thus are clearly expecting most of those to get back to service first. The airline also had 41 remaining deliveries scheduled this year, but it now expects most of those to slip to 2020. Ryanair had expected 58 737 MAX to be delivered for its summer 2020 schedule, but now expects the first in January or February next year and only 30 by the end of May. Their deliveries are somewhat more complex because they will be taking the MAX 200, a new variant of the 8 which is yet to be certificated. This process is estimated to require 6 to 8 weeks post return to service, and thus a January or February first delivery is suggestive of November return. Others, American, United, Air Canada, are making similar indications. Clearly this is a dynamic position. But initial optimistic noises about an early restoration have been replaced by the reality that nobody really knows. But for now, 
based upon these major customer comments, we have a working hypothesis of November return to service. Whilst Max remains grounded, the single aisle delivery shortfall this year continues to grow. Between them, Airbus and Boeing were expected to deliver close to 1,400 single aisle jets this year. Airbus is not without its own issues, with the A321 particularly, but that's a story for another day. But with max delivery stalled since March, the shortfall against expected annual target continues to grow. By November, the deficit will be almost 470 aircraft, and if deliveries are not able to restart then, it will be more than 500 aircraft by the end of December. The financial impact on Boeing is clear, with second quarter revenues down 35% reflecting those lower deliveries. But the impact is not just on Boeing or the airlines. These are 500 aircraft which were expected to be delivered and financed in 2019, and we are already seeing leasing companies report lower capital expenditure on the back of non-delivery. Once these aircraft are finally offered for delivery in 2020, or perhaps even 2021, will that capital still be available to finance those aircraft? And even more fundamentally, will the airline customers envisage for these aircraft still want them in that delayed timescale? Whilst the grounding continues, Boeing are of course maintaining max production, albeit at a reduced rate of 42 aircraft per month. As an aside, we understand that the last passenger 737NG, apart from a small handful built and stored pending delivery to a Chinese customer, was delivered in June 2019. So all production from Renton is now max aircraft. But at that 42 per month, and including aircraft that were in production at the time of grounding, we estimate some 232 aircraft in the production system today that cannot at present be delivered primarily as a consequence of the grounding. As of the 1st of August, Syrian Flights Analyzer had identified first flight dates for 195 of those, and we know that Boeing are moving to various locations for storage, including San Antonio in Texas, where at least 62 aircraft are today, Moses Lake in Washington, with at least 46 aircraft today, and Boeing Field in Everett in the Seattle area, where at least 55 and 22 aircraft are stored respectively. Under our working assumption of return to service in November, Boeing could have more than 350 aircraft completed and ready for customer delivery by then. And don't forget that there will still be 42 aircraft per month rolling off the line also at that time, ready for customers. Boeing's best ever month for 737 deliveries was December 2018, when they handed over 69 aircraft to customers. Clearly, there are infrastructure constraints both from an airline perspective, demand, finance and team to accept aircraft, and Boeing, but they will have to run many months at December 2018 levels or better if they are to get all of these aircraft delivered in a relatively timely manner. Rather, it seems more likely that we will have to prepare for an elongated period of 737 MAX parked aircraft before the production backlog can be finally delivered sometime in late 2020 or more likely in 2021 or beyond. And of course, with their $4.9 billion charge recently announced to cover current and future costs of the grounding, increased program cost, customer concessions, compensation and the like, the financial costs to Boeing are fundamental. With all of the negative publicity around the aircraft, and even several airlines threatening to cancel orders, including most recently rumours surfacing that China Southern Airlines will cancel, the backlog remains relatively unscathed, with more than 4,400 aircraft scheduled for delivery through the next decade. The delivery totals in 2020 will inevitably include a large portion of that production backlog. Fleet's analyzer expects around 840 deliveries next year and 680 annually through 2024. Our own recently published Syrian fleet forecast takes a more bullish view of deliveries in 2020, as we predict the production backlog is delivered even more quickly than Fleet's Analyzer expects. Before I move away from backlog, I also want to note that a substantial portion of the backlog is directly ordered by operating lessors. Today, operating lessors manage or own 45% of the stored MAX fleet, and they also account for 24% of the total firm order backlog. Amongst these 1,050 aircraft, 
We estimate there are some 140 scheduled for delivery in 2020, for which we do not have an end user yet identified, and then a further 190 similar in 2021. At the time of the grounding in March, we were hearing talk of significant negative pressure on lease rates as a consequence of this volume of less or speculative order aircraft. And although deliveries have moved backwards, it seems that this pressure will again re-exert once the grounding has lifted. Amongst all of the negative news, there is a bright spot. The IAG commitment announced a few weeks ago in Paris came as quite a surprise to most of us. It is notable not only for the timing and size of the commitment, but also because to date Boeing have had relatively little success converting A320 family customers to Max, with Airbus having relatively more success in their conversion efforts. There is clearly a lot of work to do before the commitment becomes a firm order. And I am sure that in time, any pricing associated with the deal would become public knowledge by rumour. Most fundamentally, IAG, in common with other airlines, will have significant challenges to manage as they convince their passengers that MAX is just another aircraft amongst the fleet. Time is usually a great healer, but in this social media conscious age, it is likely to take a lot of time to heal this issue. We've already talked quite a lot about MAX values through the grounding and my colleague George Dimitrov used this slide in an earlier webcast. So I won't run through it again now. However, since the grounding in March, we have made changes to max base values, current market values, and current market lease rates. Each June, we remodel base values for all commercial aircraft and engines, testing the algorithm against causal variable drivers. With renewed GDP, oil and fuel price forecast for 2019, the max 8 base value curve has changed so little that you cannot even detect the change in this plot. The change in BVs in later years is actually of the order of less than 1%. As the prior slide noted, there is potential for change to future values, but for now we simply do not have enough information on any changes in liquidity outlook to deliver an evidence-led change in future base value. Base values rather take a longer term view of an aircraft type's earning potential and thus we should not make knee-jerk reactions to short-term events. In contrast, we have seen cause to reduce both max current value market lease rates and current market values in 2019. But to be clear, neither of these changes were driven by the grounding specifically. Back in March 2019, even predating the grounding, our analysis indicated estimates of between 100 and 200 unplaced aircraft on order with lessers in the next two years. Our research indicated lease rates falling further as delivery configuration deadlines loomed for unplaced aircraft. As a consequence, our Values Review Board reduced MAX 8 lease rates by 12 to 13%, such that a new build 2019 aircraft now stands at $310,000 per month on average. Similar research for market values indicated to us that there have been transactions as part of portfolio deals, even during the grounding. We have not yet captured full details of all of these deals. However, income-based analysis indicated to us that we needed to reduce our CMV to reflect the lease rate environment we have, ensuring that lease rate factors remain broadly in line with market. Thus, our VRB agreed to reduce max 8 values by approximately 5% in July, such that our opinion of the value for a new max 8 now stands at $46.7 million to our baseline specification definition. Finally, from a values perspective, it is also too early to make any changes to our values risk outlook. Our aircraft ratings were last updated in June, and at that point we were still indicating around 17.5 to 20% downside value risk for MAX 8 and MAX 9 in a 5 and 10 year horizon. That's downside value risk over our base value. Rather like my comments earlier, we will only make changes here if and when we see significant changes in the liquidity outlook for the type. So to conclude this update on the MAX, we have four final comments to make. Boeing clearly have a lot of work to do to return MAX to service, but there is no truly credible scenario where this is not achieved. The world is not ready for a single arm monopoly, and it is actually in all our interest for MAX to be successfully returned to service. However, it's not possible presently to make a definitive statement about MAX return to service date, 
but analysis of airline comments do indicate November 2019 as a credible baseline scenario. There is not yet sufficient data to make any changes to base value or ratings outlook, but there is enough detail to make evidence-based changes to current market values and current market lease rates. And of course, the situation is dynamic and we will update regularly from here until return to service and beyond. Thanks to you all for listening. If you have any questions about these comments or anything else related to commercial aircraft values and lease rates, please don't hesitate to get in contact with me or any of our Send by Sirium and Sirium team.